What's happening guys, Safety Liner C2 here. We've got another episode of Bus Basics. This one was suggested by Nate, who said that we should take a look at the evolution of different bus models, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Don't forget that if you have something you wanna submit for Bus Basics, lots of lots, bus stuff for sale, the picture videos, or any one of my videos, you can throw that in the video request form found in the description of any one of my videos. So Nate suggested one specific model, and that's the one that we're going to take a look at today, the TC2000. In fact, we're not just going to take a look at the TC2000, we're going to take a look at the whole TC series. And we'll cover all sorts of things because I've had questions about, you know, what's the difference between an All-American and a TC? Why does the TC even exist if the All-American is a thing? So hopefully your knowledge of the TC will be a lot deeper than it was before. One real quick side note too, some of these dates are kind of harder to pinpoint, especially going back 30 years ago. So some of the changes like on the 1991 model that was only around for one year, you can also find on the 1992 model and you know, kind of stuff like that. So just keep that in the back of your mind, but without any further ado, let's talk about the evolution of the Bluebird TC2000. The TC2000 was introduced in 1987 as a cheaper alternative to the very popular Bluebird All-American and had a specific target audience of contractors and larger fleets. Since the TC2000 was introduced in late 1987, 88 was the first full model year of the bus, and although there may have been a few 1987s produced, I wasn't able to find any. The TC was essentially a toned down All-American, and while it shared the same body, there were major differences between the two in order to cut costs. Looking at the front of the bus, we go from quad to dual headlights, and from a 14 slot grille down to an 8 slot grille, four of which you can see and four of which are hidden between the headlights. If we take a look at the driver's area, we can see that the TC offers a much more simplified and essentials only area compared to that of the All-American which was obviously higher end, a difference that can easily be told just by looking. The TC offered two different engines initially, a gas Chevy 427 and the Cummins ISB 5.9, the latter of which was the more popular of the two, and standard was the Allison AT545, although you could opt to get a manual transmission in the bus as well. 1989 showed us mostly the same bus, but if you take a look near the headlights of the bus, you can see a difference between the reflectors. On the 1988 bus, we have rectangular reflectors, which can be found mounted both vertically and horizontally, but the 1989 removed the option on which way you could mount the reflectors by introducing square reflectors, which would remain on all TCs going forward. There were no major changes in 1990, but 1991 was a very big year for the TC. Firstly, we got a redesigned front end, which gave the bus a small hood with a almost Vista-like look. This change wasn't without reason though, as the hood flipped up to provide easier access for both drivers and mechanics to check and service the bus. Inside, the doghouse was slightly redesigned, providing a little more room in the driver's area. However, the biggest news for the TC came with the introduction of the TC2000 RE. The TC RE was built to directly compete with the Thomas Safety Liner ER, and both companies wanted to dominate the West Coast market, which was held on by Crown and Gillig. This wouldn't be a problem for long though, as Crown would close in 1991 and Gillig would stop production of school buses just two years later. The TCRE came standard with the Cummins 5.9 and AT545, although you had the option to order a Cummins ISC 8.3 and MT643 transmission. You can see that the bus is essentially the same exact as the TCFE, just a rear engine version of it. This design was short-lived, however, as was the 91 TCFE. 1992 brought a more familiar looking TCFE to us, and this was the final major redesign of the bus, although there were some small changes throughout the years going forward. Away was the hood from the 1991 model, as we go back to a completely flat design. Bluebird wanted to keep the same ease of serviceability that they had with the hood, although now it was in the form of three separate compartments that could be opened up. The windshield wipers were held on by two of these compartments, and the third compartment was directly in between those two. The TCRE was almost the exact same, even keeping a fake grille in the front of the bus. The door changed in 1992 from the rounded glass panes to rectangular ones, and 1993 showed us only minor changes inside the bus, as the doghouse was again reduced in size on the TCFE, 
and the shifter was placed on the right side now instead of the left, although I have seen some 92s with right side shifters. In 1994, another minor interior change was made in order to cut costs. This was done by using the same dash and pedals that were found on the Bluebird CV200, as Bluebird was the only company to use GM chassis on Type C's at this point. One year later, the gas engines were phased out due to lack of sales, making the Cummins 5.9 standard across all TC's. We didn't see any changes in 1996, but 1997 introduced us to another TC, the TC-1000. The TC-1000 kept the same goal of providing a cheaper alternative that could be bought in bulk. With this bus though, they specifically went after districts in need of special needs buses. The TC-1000 shared mostly the same design language with the TC-2000 FE, however it was different in three key ways. Firstly, the bus was only ever sold as a shorter bus, with a 132 inch wheelbase, as compared to other TCs which offered well over 100 inches more wheelbase. Secondly, the bus had a more rounded design compared to the other two, something that the D3 would later draw inspiration from. Lastly, as the bus was targeted for special needs use, the bus offered a flat floor design, which according to Bluebird would allow up to seven wheelchair students to be transported. And interesting side note, the Bluebird website from the time doesn't even show a TC-1000 on the TC-1000 page, but rather a handicapped TC-2000. No major changes happened in 1998, but 1999 was the beginning of the end for the TC series. Rewinding a little bit, the family of Albert Luce, who founded Bluebird, kept the business in the family well after his passing. That changed in 1991 when the company was sold to a private owner. Now, Bluebird had gone through financial troubles before, but in the late 90s and early 2000s, it struck again. In an ironic twist, it turns out that the TC series was actually costing Bluebird a lot of money, as at this point they had five different Type Ds that they were offering. The brand new A3 FE and RE, which had just come out in 1999, the TC-1000, 2000, and 2000 RE. The ER was winning the West Coast battle that the TC RE initially set out to compete with, and although the TC RE was sold across the country, it just wasn't enough to compete with Thomas and wasn't sold in the same numbers that the TCFE was. On top of that, Bluebird was again sold to a new owner, who would end up paying Bluebird's $237 million debt despite rising profits every year. So because of new owners trying to consolidate and low sales, Bluebird decided to retire the TC RE in 1999. As for changes on the remaining models, the TC2000 got a new gauge cluster, and on the exterior of the bus, you previously had the choice to have the headlight bar be yellow or black, but now you could only get it in yellow. 2000 saw no changes, and in 2001 the gauge cluster was again replaced, this time sharing the one that was on the A3. Bluebird's financial situation wasn't much better at this point, and due to the lack of sales of the TC-1000, it was discontinued. In 2002, the TC got even more A3 parts. This time the driver's area was essentially given the same look. A year later, it was announced that the TC-2000 was to be discontinued because the Cummins engine had been redesigned to meet new emission standards, but wouldn't fit in the bus, as it was on a different chassis than the A3, the latter of which had a drop frame chassis. The last TCs built were 2004 model years. Now, that's not the end of the story for the TC series though, because I skipped over a few outliers, so let's talk about those, the first of which being the TC-3000. One could be forgiven if thought that this was going to be a redesign of the TC-2000, but in fact it wasn't even really a TC-2000 per se, it was just a name given to exported All-Americans. The All-American had really started to be bought all across the world at this point for various different uses, and it just made more sense for Bluebird to call it the TC-3000 instead of all insert country name here to whatever country it was being sold to. Another outlier was commercial vehicles. Bluebird offered a number of commercial vehicles, which took parts from both the TC and the All-American. This had been done since the introduction of the TC back in 1987. Bluebird continued to market this bus as the more affordable option compared to the All-American, and from what we can see in this brochure, it seems that they offered many of the same options you could get on the All-American, just on a cheaper bus. They also offered other buses, and while commercial and transit buses aren't really my specialty, you can definitely see the inspiration and parts that they took from both the TC 
and All-American in products such as the Bluebird Q-Bus, the Easy Loader, and Trans Shuttle. More directly derived from the TC were the CS and APC models. The CS shared more with the previously listed models and was more configurable, allowing for options such as an extra door, different floor plans, and even luggage racks on the inside for airport usage. The APC was offered in two different variations, the 2000 and 3000. From what I've gathered, the 2000 was a TC, and the 3000 was an All-American, which makes sense with their other model names. These were essentially just commercial versions of the buses, still offering different floor plans and options within the bus, just with the same look as the school buses. While these products were bought, other companies that focused on commercial and transit buses, such as Gillig or Eldorado, already had a pretty tight grip on the market, and with the financial troubles that Bluebird was already going through, they decided to discontinue these products in the early 2000s. The third outlier was Bluebird trying a different market with the TC, and developed a prototype that never ultimately took off due to the limits of technology and resources available. That bus? The TC EV. And as you might have guessed, it was an electric version of the TC. According to an enthusiast who had its brochure, the TC EV was a 72 passenger bus with 112 lead acid batteries, which gave it 230 horsepower and a 0 to top speed of 55 in a crazy 32 seconds. After 8 hours of charging, the bus had an estimated range of 80 miles. This is the first of three different types of TC EVs. We'll talk about each of them. In 1993, the Antelope Valley Schools Transportation Agency in Lancaster, California commissioned Bluebird to build them an electric school bus, who partnered with Westinghouse Electronic Systems to build it. The bus would go into regular service on September 6, 1994 for that school year. This article by the Baltimore Sun says that the bus was the first electric school bus in the country, but we know Thomas was also working on an electric ER, which would debut in 1994, known as Sparky. We know that the bus was tested on the other side of the country, in Polk County, Florida. I tried looking for some more information to see which bus actually came out first, but came up empty-handed. Back to the TC, the CEO of Antelope Valley said that the bus was very promising and that it should save money over the long haul. And with a price tag of around $260,000, which equates to roughly $536,000 as of 2023, and over double what diesel buses were at the time, he could only hope to be right. Luckily for him, it seemed to work out. In December of 1994, only a few months after the bus was initially put on the road, the Los Angeles Times published an article called Once to Watch in 95, which showcased businesses and people to be on the lookout for. The first half of the second paragraph talks about electric school buses, mentioning that the Antelope Valley bus passed testing with flying colors. It also mentions Special Vehicle Manufacturing Corp making an electric school bus. If anyone knows anything about that, please let me know. Reactions seemed to change just a few years later in this January 1998 case study conducted by the Department of Energy, which focused on all the different types of alternative fuels that Antelope Valley had, including a whole page dedicated to the TC EV. Based off of the phrasing, it seems that the bus was still in service at the time, stating that it was assigned to shorter routes and acts as a test bed for new battery technology. It appears they also ordered another electric bus in 1995. Whether or not it was a TC EV remains unknown. The CEO was quoted as to saying, It was my hope that battery technology would advance rapidly enough to eliminate the need to go through a hybrid stage of development. It seems to me at this point, however, that a hybrid fueled by CNG will be the interim answer. I'm not giving up on electric, What's one more challenge when we have a great future? While I can't confirm it, it appears that one of these buses was sold back in 2012 on eBay. If we take a look at the link, we can see that it says that the bus is a 1996 that's unfortunately being sold for parts. The brochure we were taking a look at has a date of November 1995, so it makes sense that this could be the same bus. Interesting side note with that bus, it appears that a familiar name tried to buy the bus, but was unable to. After speaking with the seller, Matt learned that the bus had hydraulic brakes, but didn't even have enough power to climb up a hill, potentially meaning that the batteries were no good. It also had about 10,000 miles on it and was sold out of New York for around $2,000. I also found this website, and while the website name seems official, nothing else on there does, as it covers everything from the history of Red Bull to pictures of actual blue birds. Anyways, this website also confirms that the bus had a top speed of 55 
and would take roughly eight hours to charge. However, this bus is a little bit different than the Antelope Valley bus. This is the second type of TCEV. Information was pretty hard to find on this type of TCEV, but we know that Westinghouse Electric played no part in this bus. These were made by Selectria. The timeline on these buses is a little bit later than the Westinghouse buses as well. The first archive on this website was from January 24th, 2005 where it says that agencies in New York City played a part in the creation of this bus. All of this is on the same page where a hybrid electric A3 is being talked about. So if you're interested in seeing the evolution of the All-American, or any bus for that matter, let me know in the video request form. This document from the Hybrid Electric Bus Project, dated March 6, 2003, states that the bus was not only tested in New York City, but all across the country. In fact, there were eight other Selectria buses, four in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, three in Napa USD, and one in Elk Grove USD, the latter two both being in California. Again, despite all of my digging, I wasn't able to come across any further information on those buses. There were at least two other buses in the third type of TCEV, known as Zebra buses. The Zebras were still TCEVs, although they were modified and didn't have the same lead batteries that the Westinghouse and Selectria buses had. These buses had Zebra batteries in them, hence the name. I'm not even going to attempt to tell you what exactly a Zebra battery is. If you're interested, there's a whole Wikipedia page talking about it, but that's beyond me. I found this slideshow from a presentation in 2004 to different transportation agencies in the Napa Valley area, including Napa Valley USD. Without any speaker notes and me not being there and me not making this presentation, I can only pick up on a few things here and there. Firstly, it states that the lead acid batteries found on the original TCEV would require a lot of preventative maintenance, which obviously isn't ideal for a school district as they would have to either constantly send the bus back to the dealership or hire someone who can work on those batteries. It also states that the Zebra batteries wouldn't have any maintenance requirements and that both hot and cold temperatures wouldn't affect the overall performance. They then compare the Zebras with the original TCEV, showing that the bus is lighter and has a further range. According to them, the original bus had a range of 54 to 72 miles on a full charge, compared to the Zebra and what the original brochure said, both listed 80 miles. Included in the presentation is a picture of one of the Zebras. Notice on this bus we have a front stop sign, arrow turn signals, and a black headlight bar. Based off of the side of this bus, this Zebra was used by Hoover City Schools in Hoover, Alabama. Again, I tried finding information on this bus, but was not able to find anything. However, we do know that the district had been buying TCs since the early 90s, and this former Hoover bus shares a lot of similar specs. White roof, single stop sign, arrow turn signals, it has a manual door, and the Zebra looks like it could potentially have that as well, and the same numbering system, with this bus originally being 991. The number, ZEB971, tells us that this bus is most likely a 1997 bus. Interestingly enough, there was another TCEV that was also sold on eBay, this time back in 2009. The link states that the bus is a 1997 electric Bluebird with 12 rows, which fits the description of this bus. So while I can't confirm it, that seems to be the last known whereabouts of this bus. I'll also link the presentation down below if you're interested in checking that out. The other Zebra can be found on this website, which has pictures of the bus that was demonstrated in person on the day that the presentation was given. This bus seems to have been piloted in Napa Valley USD, although I wasn't able to find much more information on how long that was or if they liked it. This website goes on to say that the Zebras had six battery packs in them, two of which you can see on the left, and that after one hour of charging would bring the bus back up to 80%. I initially thought that this could have been the same bus shown off in the brochure. However, if you take a look, this bus has six windows after the side emergency door as compared to five on the brochure bus. I also thought that this could have been the bus shown off in New York. And while they both have six roads behind the emergency door, the Napa Valley bus has vents towards the back of the bus, while the New York bus doesn't appear to have any. And finally, while we're still talking about prototypes, the last outlier is relatively obscure and odd, because there's not a whole lot of information on this bus. The Bluebird TC 1000 Ari. Kinda. See, Bluebird never even gave us any information on this bus, so we don't know if it's a prototype or a special custom order. There's only pictures of one of these known to exist, Bus number one in Alta Loma School District in San Bernardino, California. Going back to the TC-1000 for a second, 
If you remember, the bus was only ever sold with a shorter wheelbase and was directly targeted for special needs use. But the Bluebird TC-1000 RE was neither of those. Taking a look at the bus, we can see inspiration from multiple other models. For example, the rounded roof that gave the TC-1000 its distinctive look, the fake grill up front from the TC-2000 RE, and even the headlights and turn signals from the Q-Bus. There's been a lot of debate over what this bus actually is, going back as far as I've been an enthusiast. One reputable enthusiast said that this was the school bus version of the APC-3000, while another says that it was built on a Q-Bus chassis. That person also said that the bus was a 2006 model. However, that wouldn't make much sense, as the Q-Bus was discontinued before then. It was also thought that this could have been a prototype D3, as mentioned earlier, the D3 shares a lot of the same rounded designs that the TC-1000 had. Finally, it was said that there could have possibly been five of these made as per Bluebird's test policy. Another enthusiast said that back in 1992, their district ordered three of these, which would make a little more sense as the TC-2000 RE was introduced in 1991 and the Q-Bus in 92. Going back to a post on the SBF forums from 2006, one enthusiast saw a TC-1000 RE at AZ bus sales, and while pictures were provided on the forum, those links have since been broken. This could be the same bus, as this picture was also taken at AZ bus sales and also belongs to Alta Loma School District, although Flickr lists the date that this picture was taken was in 2010, four years after it was initially posted on the forum. The enthusiasts on the forum claimed that the bus was an 84-passenger bus with a John Deere CNG engine, which for some reason seems to be the only part of this bus that enthusiasts can agree upon. It also had red seats, and the build plate said that the bus was listed as a 1997 TC-1000RES. The most recent sighting of this bus was in 2021 in the Alta Loma School District bus yard. Of course, I've tried over a number of years to find this bus sitting in their lot, but there's never been a good view of it. I've also ran the license plate, which still seems to be active, and Carfax returns the search as a 1996 Bluebird Transit bus. I personally believe that this was a prototype school bus placed on a Q-Bus chassis, Although it does confuse me as to why Bluebird would give that bus away and for the school district to have it in service for at least 17 years if there was only ever one of these made. Compare that to the 25 or so EC-72s that were later given out to districts in Georgia, that makes a little more sense to me. There is one other possible explanation as to what this bus could be, and while it might seem like a bit of a stretch, I think it would be a pretty big coincidence if these two weren't somehow related. Stick with me, we're going to jump around a little bit. I already mentioned that the TC-1000 RE had a John Deere CNG engine, and Bluebird had been working with John Deere since 1995 to push alternative fuels. In fact, Bluebird had already been working on alternative fuels for a few years, as evidenced by the TC EV. In 1991, Bluebird worked with Tecogen Incorporated to provide 10 new CNG buses to districts in Los Angeles, San Diego, and San Francisco. This would be part of a larger grant to replace 463 California buses with new alternative fuel buses, the first of which would be available for the start of the 91-92 school year. In this study conducted by the Washington State Legislature in December of 1991, they specifically stated that the 463 buses that were being replaced were Type D buses that were made before April 1st, 1977, and would consist of advanced diesel, methanol, and CNG buses. Antelope Valley, who originally ordered the TCEV, would receive at least one of each of these. This all hurts the argument of the person who said that the TC-1000 RE is a 1992 bus, as this picture clearly shows a non-RE Bluebird, and it was most likely a CNG bus covered by the grant. Back to 1995, Poway USD, which was less than two hours away from Alta Loma USD, asked Bluebird to make a bus that had a John Deere engine in it, presumably starting the relationship between the two companies. While I wasn't able to find any specific information on that bus, the Bluebird website, archived on January 28, 1998, has a page dedicated to natural gas vehicles, showing three different engine options, two John Deere engines and one Cummins. They were only available on the TC, FE, and RE models at the time, but would be offered on the A3 when those were released. And while those engines were actually sold on TCs, they were nowhere near as popular as diesels. After learning all that, I thought that the Poway bus could be the TC-1000 RE, 
so I went to go look for the VIN to see if it might have been sold to Altaloma from Poway. Eventually, I was able to find the VIN, which 100% confirms that the bus is a 1996. This website also lists the bus model as a TC2000, as does this one. With the VIN, I then went to Bluebird Vantage to see if I could find any information on this bus, but Vantage had no hits on it whatsoever. The age has nothing to do with this, as this 1989 bus pulls up on Vantage, and even the EC-72s pull up on there, so I'm unsure as to why the TC-1000RE doesn't. After some further runs on the VIN, I learned that in 1998, the California DMV reported that the bus had 14,000 miles on it, so the bus was obviously being used. Additionally, in 2017, the title was updated, but with no specifics to what was actually changed. Anyways, I bring all of that up to make a point. Bluebird saw the potential of alternative fuels and was working with the government at the same time on a completely different project that would do its best to push alternative fuels, the Bluebird Envirobus. See, as I was editing this video, I went back to go verify some information and came across the Envirobus. It's nothing new to me, but I stopped for a minute and read everything as I do every time because it's just such a neat prototype. But it hit me when I realized that both buses had John Deere engines. Again, it wasn't a very popular option. The dates line up almost perfectly too, with the Envirobus releasing in 1996 and the TC-1000 RE also being in 1996 according to VIN, which both come after a couple years of Bluebird working on alternative fuels. But when I put the pictures up side by side, it made me wonder why I had never made that connection before. Both are Aries, sharing a very similar roof cap shape that almost no other Bluebird had. The fake grill in between the same headlights with the same Bluebird logo, even with the limited shots we have of both of these, you have to admit there are some similarities. It made me feel less crazy knowing that as far back as 2006 in the original form thread about the TC-1000RE, there were other people who also thought that this could be related to the Envirobus. The Envirobus was never meant to go into production and was only a prototype, but could this be a prototype for the prototype? Or maybe this was Bluebird's attempt to bring the Envirobus to market with a more realistic look and put under the proven TC name. Whatever it is, I, as well as a number of other enthusiasts, have always and will continue to refer to this bus as the TC-1000 RE. But hopefully we'll learn more about this extremely rare bus one day. The TC series, especially the TC-2000 FE, was immensely popular and could be found all over the country. While I've never had the opportunity to ride or drive any version of the TC, the general consensus is that while you might have given up some features, it didn't sacrifice the ride or drive quality, as countless people have said that these are great riding and driving buses. Bluebird met their goal of making a cheaper bus, and not only did larger districts and contractors buy this bus, but also smaller districts who may not have had the money to afford an All-American or such, but needed a new bus. While it's highly unlikely to come back anytime soon, I believe that a modern version of the TC would remain a popular bus, so long as Bluebird continued to keep the costs low while providing a ride and drive that would normally be found on higher end buses. And there you have it, that is a overview of the Bluebird TC series. Now of course, I didn't tell you every single thing about the TC series. There were minor changes throughout the years ranging from the engine to the windshield, but hopefully this gave you a much better overview of the major changes and overall timeline of the TC series. If you liked this video and maybe want to see the evolution of another bus model, let me know in the video request form where you can also submit stuff for lots of lots, bus stuff for sale, the picture submission form, or any one of my videos. And with that, that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I always do appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe right down here. It's a magical white button that says you are now subscribed to Safety Liner C2. Make sure you comment up here, down here, over here, or over here. I don't know where they put it down here where they put it. Make sure you also give this video a thumbs up or we are never going to get any more information on the TC-1000 RE. And make sure you also share this video with a friend. Show it to your mom. Show it to your dad. Show it to a guy on a random street. I don't care. Don't let anything happen to you. So yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video. And thanks for watching.